excited you could join me for this ginger snap pullover. It's a really fun and pretty easy pullover. I really enjoyed it and it has some fun striped color work. But to get started, I just want to talk about the supplies. I use the Brava worsted weight. I absolutely love it. I think it's one of the best worsted weight yarns in terms of an acrylic that I've ever had. I'm for sure partial to it. And then I'm also partial to the Furls crochet hooks. This is the Hook I 5.5 millimeter hook that I'm going to be using. This is their Streamline and this is the Cookies and Cream version, which is super fun. And the fun thing about these is every single one that you buy is unique, so yours won't even look the exact same to mine, so it's super special to have a one-of-a-kind hook. For today, I am going to be making the size small. However, I thought I would mix things up. These are the original colors that I made the size large in that you see in some of the pictures. And I'm going to substitute this color for this color, partly because of what I also have in my stash. I'm afraid of running out of this beautiful color, but I know I have plenty of gray. I want to also encourage you to do the same. If you have a color palette that you really, really like, go for it. It's okay. You don't have to make it in the colors that I chose. And even for myself, if I'm going to make it again for a video, I like to kind of mix it up so that I can show a variety of colors. So we're going to go ahead and get started. Grab color A, which for me today will be gray, and grab your hook. Before we jump right in with our yarn, I just wanted to take a minute to talk about construction. This is the large size, and the way that this is worked, just to give you an idea of the lay of the land here, is you see this really unique top knit rib look. It's obviously crochet, this crochet pattern. And to get this top, the way I created it and the way we're going to be working today is we're going to be working it in the other direction. So when we first start, we are going to be creating, I'm going to kind of pull it out here, this panel, this rectangle panel. It's actually worked from left to right this way. And we'll start by working the panel from here. We'll work our way up until the point where we split. And where we split it in half, we will work a section the, the length that we need. And then we'll come back and work this section. And then we will work across both sections to complete the other side of the shoulder. So once we have that done, then we will start working on the body. We're going to turn our top section and we're going to work the body down from one long side of that rectangle. We're going to work it in the moss stitch this way. And once we work all of that, we will flip it over and do the same thing on the other side. And then after that, we will work on our sleeves and then it's doing the ribbing and any seaming. So this is constructed by working this top section first, then the body, then we work on the sleeves. So let's get started. We're going to start by creating a slip knot and placing that onto our hook. And then we are going to chain 27. I've started by chaining 27. I will slip stitch in the second chain from my hook and across. And whenever I do my first row of slip stitch, I really like to slip stitch into the back hump of the stitch. And I also have a tutorial about that if you're not sure what the back hump is. I just find when I slip stitch in the back hump, it kind of gives me a nicer bottom clean edge. So slip stitch not too tightly. You don't want these slip stitches to be tight. The slip stitch across so you will have 26. We will turn our work and now we are going to work across this as well. But for this row, we will start by chaining one and we are going to slip stitch in the back loop only. So we don't want to be working into that front loop. We want to just work through that back loop and we are going to very loosely, you do not want to do these too tight. I tend to have issues with doing them too tight and I really have to loosen up. When I slip stitch, I'm going to pull up a loop and make sure that that loop has plenty of space before I pull it through the loop on the hook. So we will slip stitch into the back loop of all 26 stitches across. And now that I'm to the end of row two, I am going to turn and we are on row three. And for row three, I'm going to chain one and then now I'm only going to be working in the front loops only. 
and our odd rows, so row three, is our right side facing. There will be a wrong side and a right side to this. As of right now, it's kind of hard to tell, but the more that you go, you will see what I mean. So now for row three, we will be working in the front loops only, slip stitching 26 stitches across, and that is our repeat for every single size. Um, but for size small, we'll be working these 26 stitches across repeating rows two and row three. So the last two rows we, rows we did, so row two, you'll be working 26 slip stitches in the back loop only, and row three, you work 26 stitches in the front loop only, and you'll repeat row two and three for 18 rows. So we wanna make sure that we get this um, enough length for one of the shoulders. So simply repeat this for 18 rows, which after you do this one, then you repeat for 18, and then we'll come right back. So now that I've completed my first section, we're going to go ahead and do the first section of the neck opening where we only work half the stitches. So I'm gonna start by chaining one, I've chained one, and I am going to do slip stitches in the back loop only, but I'm not going to work across all 26, I'm only going to work across 13 of these stitches, and then I will stop and turn. So we're not going to work this entire row, we're kind of separating so that we have a neck opening. And I completely lost count there. And here's 12, 18, 19, 20, 21. So I should still have 13 stitches over here. One, two, three, four, five, six, nine, 12, 13. So I have 13 stitches unworked, 13 stitches I just worked. And now I'm going to turn and chain one. Now working in the front loops only, the next thing we're going to do is slip stitch across these 13. And if you notice, all we're going to do is keep doing that. So we're going to repeat for size small. We're going to be repeat working in the back loop and the front loop, so that will be row one and two for this section. And for size small, we're going to repeat that for 38 more times. So I will work this, this repeating row one and two, 38 more times, and it builds out that first section of the neck. And then we will come back. So keep building this section out and come right back. So now that I have worked the first neck section, it's time to go ahead and fasten off the yarn and we are going to go ahead and work the second neck section. Now, when the last time that we were working this, we actually started the section facing the wrong side. So we're going to do that again to make sure that these match up correctly. So with the wrong side facing, go ahead and join your yarn to that last, that first stitch available next to this first row we worked on this section. So we will once again be working in the back loops only. So I'm going to attach my yarn in the back loop and chain one. And now I'm going to slip stitch across the 13 here on this other side, the second side of the neck opening. So this will be worked the same as the first. We'll just end up with two flaps right next to each other. And we will be working this for, I'll do this, this, row, then the next row. So this will be row one and two, and that will also be our repeats for this sec second section. This is row one, and row two is to chain one, and slip stitch into the front loops only all the way across these 13 stitches. So now we will repeat row one through two for the same amount of times. So we're going to repeat 38 more rows after this. So it's just the same. We're just going to, to mimic what we did on this side for the exact same amount of rows. So go ahead and work that, and then we will come right back, push pause, enjoy the process. Welcome back, and I hope you're enjoying this project. Now that we have the second neck panel done, we are going to go ahead and fasten off this yarn again. And 
just a note a lot of times there can be a little bit of a gap when we're joining yarn here it's just when you go ahead and weave in the end feel free to reinforce the stitches in between here so that they don't pull and look funny and now we have a tail end to do the same up here as well so i'm going to fasten off here and now is the point where we are going to start working from the wrong side again and we are going to attach back to this first side panel Looks like I accidentally chained one there the last time I did this, which makes sense. Sometimes I just quickly do that chain one and I forget that I don't have to do that on the very last row. So I'm going to attach to this stitch, but I'm going to do so in the back loop only. And now I'm going to grab my yarn and attach it and chain one. And now we are going to work again in the back loops and we are going to slip stitch across these first 13 stitches. And now that we have our 13 stitches here, we are going to go ahead and start slip stitching across the second panel. So we're kind of con we're connecting these together again, and we are going to slip stitch across the second panel, kind of pulling, not too tight, but we don't want the stitch between these panels to be loose. We want it to be worked in the same way. And we'll continue across these 13 stitches so now we're back to working a total of 26 stitches in each row. And now that I'm into the end of that row, we will turn and chain one. And now working in the front loops only, we are going to work across these two, these all these 26 stitches across, we're working across the two panels. And now that we have worked across those 26 stitches, we will turn, chain one, and now we're going to repeat those two rows. We're going to slip stitch in the back loop only for a row and slip stitch in the front loop only for a row and we'll repeat those for 18 more times just the same as we did when we started here so once we build out this second shoulder then we'll move on to the body so work this for um, 18 18 more repeats of the row one and two and it will match the first shoulder and then you can go ahead once you work this out fasten off and weave in all of your ends and then we'll be back to start working the body. And I'm back again and I know, I know, I told you to weave in your ends and then here I am and I haven't weaved in my ends. It's because I'm trying to get this next section done. I've got my family inside waiting to watch a Disney Plus movie and so I said I would hurry and go film this part because I want to work this next part up while we watch the movie tonight. So the next thing that we will do is we will go ahead and work um, across one of the long sides of this. So this is where our neck goes, and then this is where we're going to start building the body. So for the size small, we will be slip stitching 78 stitches across here. Now what that equals out to be is simply one stitch per row. So that can kind of make it a little bit easier to see where you're supposed to be putting that slip stitch is think of it as one stitch per row. And to count these rows, it's kind of easier if you count them in twos by this rib. So every single time you have a, a, a ridge here, that is two rows. There's one to the left and the right of that ridge. So you will slip stitch 78 across this one edge. All right, 
so now that I have 78 stitches, I'm going to turn my work. Now we have the wrong side facing and I will chain one. We are going to start working a moss stitch, but for, for, this, for, for this first row that we do after the slip stitch row, we are going to be working into the front loops only. The reason why I like to do this is I feel like it creates a nice line and edge on the right side of the work when we work in the front loop only on the wrong side of the work. So we will start by doing a single crochet into the front loop of the very first stitch, and then we are going to chain one, skip one, and single crochet into the front loop of the next. And we're going to repeat that until the very last stitch. So we single crochet, chain one, skip one, single crochet, chain one, skip one. So work that all the way across until you get to that last stitch. Now that I'm getting towards the end, I'm going to chain one, skip one, single crochet, and then we still have one stitch left. We're going to go ahead and do another single crochet into that stitch. Then we will turn our work, and we are going to be working through both loops now from here on out. We're not going to do any more front loop or back loop for this section. And we are going to chain one, our beginning chain that does not count as a stitch, and we will single crochet in the first, chain one, skip one, single crochet into the chain space. So chain one, skip one, single crochet into the chain one space. We're going to work that all the way across, and then as we get to the end, we will simply single crochet into the last stitch. And I'll show you that one more time when I get there. And now as I come to the end, I single crochet into the last chain space, and then I simply single crochet into that last stitch. And that is working the moss stitch. It's just a repeat of that row from here on out. So we're just repeating that row two, excuse me, sorry, row three. We're repeating row three of the body section from here on out. But here's where it gets exciting with color changes. So I have a handy chart, and I've also included which indicated which rows in the pattern the colors will change. I'm gonna be changing the colors here because I think it's kind of hard to see the difference between the red and the um, dark rust color. And remember, I'm substituting my rust for gray. But um, I'm going to include this visual chart, so if you just kind of want to sit and relax, you're just gonna work um, down this chart so that you follow these colors. So as you can see, we'll be changing these colors in, in this way. Each row, it will be one row on here. So I will work seven rows in gray, and then I'll change to seven, sorry, six rows in red, and four rows in gray, and one in red, and it will just alternate between the colors. This is a really relaxing part of the project. The stitch remains the same. We're, use, we're using that row three moss stitch, and every so often we're just changing colors and building this body. So go enjoy. I'm gonna go watch a Disney movie with my family, and I hope you relax during this body section as well. Welcome back. Now you have one of the body sides completed and it's just such a fun color stitch design. And it's a really simple stitch, but it gives such a nice texture. So now that we've done the first side, we're going to turn this around and with the right side facing, we're going to join our yarn here and slip stitch 70, I wanna say, I've already forgotten. <laughs> Sorry, I'm looking over here at my computer. Slip stitch 78 stitches across this edge, just like we did 78 stitches here, and then continue with the instructions to do the exact same thing we did on the first side. If you do want to do some adjustments with the larger sizes, because I know sometimes we want one side to be a different width than the other, say, you know, we're making room for the chest, but we don't need that room in the back, you can slip stitch fewer stitches along here to, to not have as many stitches along the back. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to work the same exact way I did on this first body section. I'm going to do the second body section and then we'll come on back. Welcome back. This At this point, you have the front and the back body sections done on this sweater. Ignore this, we're gonna talk about this in a minute. But notice you have a lot of, ends to weave in, I would not worry about those yet because I'm actually going to use some of these ends 
as I seam up my side. I mean, I might as well. I'm going to be weaving them in anyway, and they help with those color changes for the seam. So I save this weaving in of end till the very end. I usually do a lot of times anyway. I don't know. It's just my preferred way to just do it all at once while I watch a show. So you have your front and your back panels and something like this is what you have. The next thing we're going to do is what's sitting out over here, which is a sleeve. The first time I actually made this sweater, I did the sleeve separate and then I seamed it and I didn't exactly like the seam. Now, maybe you're really good at seaming. It's something I hate doing. I don't always think my seam looks that great and that's fine. Feel free if you want to modify the sleeve to do it um, not not on the sweater and you can seam it later, but I want to show you what I feel like looks best and that is to attach to the sweater and then decrease our sleeve. So you can kind of see it here it attaches to the side. We've got this shoulder section, a bit of the front and the back body so that we make sure we have the correct depth of our sleeve. And then I simply decrease the sleeve as I also do some color changes along the way. So I'm going to show you how to do it with this method, which I think gives a much cleaner and comfortable and better fitted look. So we are going to turn our sweater so we can work this side of the sleeve. And I've included this in the pattern for the size small. You're going to count down from the shoulder area. You're going to count your body rows counting down just in the way that you created them. And we're going to attach stitch markers to the row 15. So I'm going to attach my stitch marker to row 15 on this side. And then I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing on this side. So now I have two stitch markers and this is the exact width we need in inches in order to have the right sleeve inset. So what we're doing inside a little bit differently here. So go ahead and grab your blue yarn, your color C. Ooh, there we go. Sorry, I moved some stuff on my desk there. Go ahead and grab the color C and we're going to join our yarn at this first stitch marker. Go ahead and chain one. And now we are going to be slip stitching the amount of stitches we need between this first stitch marker and this second stitch marker. And for size small, that is 58 stitches. Now I definitely have 26 stitches here because that's what we did. So if I wanted to, I could think of that as, okay, I know I have 26 stitches here, I need 58 total, and then I can estimate how many stitches I need between here and here, which that is, I believe, about 16 stitches. So I simply start slip stitching almost one per row, but some will kind of have to be snuck in there on certain sizes. It'll be more than one per row on certain sizes. So just be conscious of that. And I'm just going to slip stitch from one stitch marker to the next. It's very similar to what we did on this edge. All right, so I have counted and double counted that I have 58 stitches from stitch marker to stitch marker. So if you want, you can take that out. We have used them for our purpose. We now have our sleeve width at the top in there with how many stitches we need. Now you can turn your work and we can go ahead and chain one or not. I don't know if you caught this in the pattern notes or not, but if you didn't, I know a lot of these have been doing a chain one and or turning the new doing a chain one because that's how they're consistently written when it comes to crochet patterns. But when you are working single crochet stitches as we are, if you didn't want to chain one at on the edges, I actually find that you could just go ahead, just work into that first single crochet stitch without chaining one and it's a nice straight edge. So to start this next row, we, we are going to be working in the front loops only, just like we did here. So we're repeating the same stitch method as we did up here with that moss stitch. And we are going to do a single crochet in the very first front loop of the slip stitches we just made. Then we're going to chain one, skip one, and single crochet in the front loop again. So chain one, skip a slip stitch, single crochet in the front loop of the next slip stitch. And we're going to repeat that across our 58 stitches until we get to that last stitch, which will also be a single crochet. Now 
Now that I get to the end here, I will do chain one, skip one, single crochet, and then single crochet in the very last sleeve stitch. And now I'm going to turn and we will continue to work the next two rows. This is for the size small. Not all sleeves are going to, all sleeve sizes are going to decrease the same way that the small is going to. Before the size small, now we will start to work our moss stitch across the sleeve where we do a single crochet, chain one, skip one, single crochet in the next chain space. Chain one, skip one, single crochet. Chain one, skip one, single crochet. And then just like we did on the body, when I get to the end of the row, I single crochet into that last stitch. So we're going to do this for row two and row three, and then come back when you are on row four, because that is going to be a decrease row. So on row four, we are going to be decreasing one stitch from each side of the sleeve. That way we're decreasing our sleeve as we go. So what we will do is we will single crochet the first two stitches together. Those are both single crochet stitches. And now we're going to single crochet into the next chain space. Chain one, skip one, single crochet. And we're going to work that chain one, skip one, single crochet until the last three stitches. Now that we are at the last three stitches, we're going to do a chain one, skip one, and now we have a chain space and a single crochet left. We are going to single crochet the chain space and the last single crochet together. And that is the end of row four. But because we have decreased on each side, it's going to change our stitch repeat for a little while until we decrease again. So this is how the rows will be worked for the next three. So for the next three rows, this will be your repeat. You will do a single crochet into the first stitch and a single crochet into the second stitch, which is a chain space. And now we will chain one, skip one, single crochet. And that's what will be worked the rest of the way across. The chain one, skip one, single crochet. Now that's the repeat for the next three rows until we decrease again. So for the size small, we will be decreasing every fourth row. And I've written it out in the pattern to make it a little bit easier, just so you don't always have to wonder where you are as a, I believe an eight row repeat. So you'll be repeating rows four through 11. And so I just wanna show you again, when it decreases, it goes back to um, our regular repeats on each row. So now for row eight, which is another decrease row, we are going to do a single crochet two together and we're using the first single crochet and the chain space to do that. And then we will chain one, skip one, single crochet. Chain one, skip one, single crochet. And then when we get to the other side, we will do our other decrease in the last two stitches. So as I get to the end here, I have two stitches left, and this is where I'm going to do another single crochet two together. And now we've decreased two stitches again, and then we go back to repeating row two for three rows. And I want to also mention, so I'm not gonna show you this again and again, because it's the same thing over and over, but we will be changing colors. So while you're doing this, also pay attention in the pattern. I have a little, um, chart or information there for you to, that lets you know what rows we're going to change on. So for size small, we will be using color C, the blue, through, for rows 1 through 17. And then for rows 18 through 34, we're using color D. And then for rows 35 through 51, we're using color B. And then for the very last color, we are using color a. Now notice there's not much color A on here. That's because I've calculated for a cuff. So our cuff will make up the rest of that color to make these stripes a bit more equal. So continue to decrease as you go. 
only decrease to the amount of stitches that it needs to be to, and then just continue in, this, in the established moss stitch pattern. So for size small, you will only decrease until you get to 32 stitches across. And once you have that, you, can, you just continue to work in the moss stitch until you have completed all the 54 rows. So look at this, we are back. We have both of our sleeves made and the next thing we're going to do, I have already done here to show you where we're headed, but we will do it to this other side too, is we are going to do some seaming, yay. <laughs> I know seaming is not always my favorite, but I did find I did not mind it for this sweater. The nice thing is this moss stitch really helps hide a seam. So on this side, this is my seam that runs right here, if you can see it. The point is you can't really see it too well, which is great. And I've also got the seam down the sleeve. So here's how I recommend to seam. And this is where leaving all those ends actually benefits us. So I start from the cuff area and I will use my ends for each section. So I'm seaming while I'm also kind of weaving in my ends at the same time. So I will start by seaming here with my yarn needle. So yarn needle and scissors need to be handy. And I'm just going to seam these edges together from the cuff to the top of the arm. And then I'm going to seam down from basically the armpit down the side of the sweater. And then once we have seamed, we'll come back and we will talk about how to put on this cuff part. But so right now I want you to take care of all these ends and do some seaming, watch a show. That's what I tend to do, listen to a book or a good podcast. So, in, so that it makes uh, this process a little bit more enjoyable and relaxing. And I want you to seam on both sides of your sweater from cuff to armpit to down the sides. And once we have done that, then all we have left is some ribbing. So work on that and we'll come right back. All right, so we have got all of our seams done and our ends weaved in. So now it's really starting to look like a nice clean sweater. And the last things that we will need to do is to do this style of ribbing on both of the cuffs. And then also we wanna do a little bit of ribbing all the way along the bottom here. So I wanna show you how that is worked. Going to start by doing it on this cuff. I'm going to join, I still like to join where my seam is. Where's my seam? Oh, that's, that's good, I can't find it. Um, so I still like to join around the spot where my seam is and I'm going to join it in color A. And for the sleeves, I'm going to chain 12 so that you can see how this has worked. We actually work it perpendicular here. So I'm going to chain one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. We're gonna be working 12 and then we're going to do one more for a turning chain. So 13 total chains. Now when I'm going to kind of turn my sleeve here because I'm going to be working back and forth this way. So from the second stitch from the hook, I'm going to slip stitch and then I'm going to slip stitch across for a total of 12 stitches. And now that I have done my 12 stitches, tail in there, I will go ahead and I'm going to slip stitch into the next two stitches. So I went from the, from the bottom of the, of the sleeve. So I'm gonna slip stitch two stitches from the sleeve edge. And now I'm going to turn my work. Because we're working across this portion here, I turn my work. And now I'm going to skip the two slip stitches I just did from the cuff edge. And now for the rest of this, we will be working in the back loops only. So the very first slip stitch is a little bit fickly, but it works out nicely. I just skip the first two stitches and I start by slip stitching 
in the back loop only of those 12 stitches that we're working for the ribbing. So slip stitch all the way to the end. And now we are going to turn again and chain one. And I kind of like to tighten that chain one down a little. And we're going to do the same thing as we did before. And we are going to continue to work in the back loops. And we are going to slip stitch 12 across and then slip stitch two from the body of the body of the sleeve cuff. Now once again, we will slip stitch the next two stitches from the cuff. Turn your work. And now still working in the back loops, but we skip the two stitches from the cuff and we go ahead and slip stitch 12. So we're just gonna repeat those two rows again and again, working in the back loop only and slip stitches all the way around this body of the cuff. And then I will show you how to join the two ends after you've worked it all the way around. So now that I have worked this slip stitch, it almost looks like a knit ribbing, which is really nice, it's pretty stretchy and flexible all the way around the bottom of my sleeve, I want to join these together. And to do that, we are going to chain one, and then we are going to insert our hook into the back loop again of this stitch, just as, just as if we were doing before. But we are also going to insert it into that extra loop from the very beginning our starting edge and we're going to work a slip stitch through both of those at the same time. And we will work that all the way down this ribbing and it joins them together and completes our last row. So now that I've worked the 12 stitches down joining, I can go ahead and fasten off that yarn and weave in that end. And that's all I will do for both of the cuffs. And then the last ribbing that we have that we're going to be doing will be on the base. Now this one, we're not going to do quite as long as we did here. So I'm going to join at a seam. It's always best to join at a side. And then I'm going to be working seven stitches. So to do this, to get started, we will want to actually chain eight so that we have our turning chain. So I'll go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, but now we're going to slip stitch in the second stitch from the hook and we're going to slip stitch in each across and then there will be seven total stitches. And then we will continue to work this the exact same way as we did the cuff. And as we get to the bottom of those seven, now we will do two slip stitches from the body, from the bottom of the body, turn and working in the back loop slip stitch again. So this is the exact same thing as we just did for the cuffs, only we're doing it around the bottom of the sweater. And once you get all the way around, you'll join just the same way we did on the cuff. And then that's it. And then you have a completed sweater. Just weave in your ends and wear it. I hope you enjoy this as much as I have. I, I really like the boat net look boat neck look um, at the top of it with the unique ribbed edging. I find it fits and feels really, really comfortable. And I like having a lot of these fun stripes. I hope you enjoy this project and you join me again for another project soon.